Apostle Femi Lazarus is a man raised by God to demonstrate his wisdom and authority to the last day church. He is the lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church and God told him years ago that a time will come where my wisdom will be needed to navigate tough times in the body of Christ. Then I will cause your voice to be heard and all who pay attention to my word on your lips will not lack light and direction. One of the things that have killed revivals is sin. And sin creeps in when men are no longer staying in the presence. And men deviate from the presence because they become too heavy. He is a man sent from God, sent to raise God's end time armies. With Apostle Femi Lazarus, every minute counts as you listen attentively. speak to us this morning in a way that only you can. And let all glory return to you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Um, I mean, I want to join me celebrating streams of life. Lagos people, do you guys dance? Because in this house, praise is not just an activity, it's a covenant. So I want you to rejoice and give God praise. Is that the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please be seated. have a pastor in our midst, so let me just welcome and celebrate him and his dear wife, Pastor Wale and his dear wife. Yeah. really honor you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And when I saw them walking, I just knew that all right, there's something prophetic about it, considering what we are dealing with at the moment. Praise God. All right. I'd like, to, I'd like to request that you please, all right, get all this teaching. All right. There's a reason I teach the way I teach. Because every sermon I teach on is a potential book. Are you following what I'm saying? So the way I see a message is the same way you will see crude oil. All right, from crude oil, you can get out petrol, what else? Kerosene, diesel, your normal gas, bitumen, and all, so on and so forth and so forth. May God give us the wisdom to begin to maximize all. In the name of Jesus. And your life too will be maximized. In the name of Jesus. So I started this series. I've laid some foundation. I'm just going to continue from there. And I said that, so we are currently on the series, Apostles in the Marketplace. Apostles in the Marketplace. And I laid the foundation and I said that an apostle in the marketplace is not necessarily any Christian that is in business and making money. An apostle in the marketplace is not necessarily anybody, any Christian who is in secular endeavors or businesses other than church. Meanwhile, church is not a business. An apostle in the marketplace is not any believer doing anything and making money. It's that simple. Alright? And this needs to be understood correctly. 
And I also told you that you sincerely, people don't need God to make money. There are principles. If you stay with those principles, you make money. So money can be a sign that God approves of your life. It can't be a sign that God is okay with you. It is not a sign that your eternity is secure. Money can bribe God. Money can buy his favor. The richest man in the world is not a born again Christian. But yet his assets can buy most of the countries in Africa as a whole. Amen. So we are, we are looking at other kinds of people that we rise. Not just anybody. So I've said a lot of things. Was it? All right. So I said I'm going to teach on. So let me just give you the term, the term, the definition of terms again. So you can go back to it. So you want to put your pen and write. I said the term apostle used to describe or the term apostles in marketplace. All right? Is usually used to describe believers in marketplace. Comma. That term is usually used to describe believers in not full stop. Comma. All right? Not any believer in the marketplace. Believers in the marketplace whose purpose there is first to use the wisdom of scriptures, their purpose in the marketplace. This is their purpose now. Not just about making money. You have to make money. Because if that does not work, should not eat. True or not true? Talk to me now. True or not true? You have to. Particularly looking at a place like Lagos, like this. <laughs> if you don't work... <laughs> Uh, but you see, the secret is not the secret of prosperity is not hustling and bustling. That's not the secret. That's why everybody is angry in this city. There's anger. When NSAS came, it was more violent here. Let the sun start shining now. And ask somebody at the Joel Egba, Edge of Unlossy, she a more right. And you wonder, ah, okay, I feel like we're clear. It's just anger. I was, I was driving in the Badon one time. And I was telling one of my boys with me about the psychology of Uber. Um, sorry, Mikra. And I said, it's a very simple psychology. When your accomplishments in life are few, you will see overtaking another car as a major accomplishment. So you just want to win in something. It's a basic... No, that's not an insult. It's just the basic psychology. Somebody is depressed, is down. He needs to win at something. And that's why if you don't understand what I'm saying now, you will see beating your wife as an accomplishment because you have to succeed at something. Somebody needs to understand that you are in charge. Say, I'm the man. Yeah, it's because you are failing. That's why you need to announce. Those who have so much to lose, don't drive recklessly. Now, 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 now I've said that to my boys here. <laughs> drive responsibly. There's a lot on your shoulder. You get know what I'm saying? Praise God. <laughs> you know, here yeah, even silence is a gist. <laughs> okay. Somebody drove me for five days. I said, Come down. My friend, step down. Sit down there. In fact, there was a time I zoomed and left one like that. Okay. I said, Find your way over. It's like you are looking for something that will kill you fast.
But that's the truth. Why do you think anywhere poverty exists, violence exists? Because if you are failing in many aspects, you want to win at something. If removing the teeth of the guy who disrespects you is the way to prove you are a champion, you just want to do it. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus, you will not fail. Amen. You didn't say that amen again loud and clear. Amen. You will not fail. Amen. God is going to trust you with resources amen. and wealth amen. in the name of Jesus. So I said the term apostles in the marketplace is used to describe believers in the marketplace whose purpose there is to use the wisdom of scriptures, the flawlessness of their character, to use the wisdom of scriptures, the flawlessness of their character, and the intelligence operating upon their lives to solve problems in the marketplace and ultimately point men to God. They are wise. They have character. They are intelligent, then they point men to God. That when men have seen your light, then they go and trace who is your father in heaven. But that light has to shine. Let me say this to you. Before your gift becomes a tool of evangelism, you must become the best. Anything done with mediocrity inspires no one. True or not true? Talk to me now doesn't inspire anybody. In fact, I've, <laughs> I've noticed that there is something carnal about the mind of man. That's the truth. That even in their spiritual state, there's still something carnal. There is a different kind of message that only result preaches to people. You don't know. You don't know. Let me, let me give you an instance. Uh -huh. my wife she's preaching as I'm preaching now but I hope she will not hear this part so one day like that my wife is a born again Christian are you aware? she has the Holy Ghost, are you aware? so one day I, I couldn't tell and what I'm going to give you is a secret because you are not married so you need to hear what I want to tell you now you need to write you will write too much. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. She was just not smiling. Didn't look happy. I tried everything. It was those days of what's good about the money. So I looked at her. And I said, I know a love language that can change the mood of a woman in seconds. So, I opened the drawer beside the bed and I was counting money. So I said, I will spray this money as you dance. When you stop dancing, I stop spraying you. He said, don't worry me, Joe, don't worry me. Ah, multi change. <laughs> eh? No, no, no. Holy Ghost, where are you? <laughs> and she was dancing. Amy, I know what I have ready to release in my mind. Ah. Oh, when he got there, I said, well, let him know you were not normal, but I. Now, let me say this to you. There are homes that lack have destroyed, but there are also homes that abundance have destroyed. So what money does to a person is relative to who receives it. That's the truth. What money does to you is relative to your heart, your mind, and what you are, what you think, the structures God has been able to build. So I said this, and I want you to understand it. Amen. 
what I'm doing. Please help bring him to the front. Please, with honor, let's please celebrate Daddy Pivio. Amen. Please be seated. All right. We are blessed. All right. Please pay attention. So good to have you around, sir. Amen. So I said, what money does to you or what money does to a person is relative to who receives it. So not every Christian in the marketplace is an apostle in the marketplace. There are Christians in the marketplace who are an embarrassment to the cross. There are bosses who are in the marketplace that they do the same thing people who are not born again are doing. They try to sleep with you to give you promotion. There are Christians who are lecturers who still take bribe. True or not true? So not all Christians were trained before they received the sceptre of power. And that's why I said that anytime prosperity gets to the hand of a believer, before training gets to that believer, it is a bad news. Wealth is not a good news until the fellow wielding it is an ambassador of Christ. There are testimonies that people share that that's the beginning of their destruction. God is not holding anything back from you, but there are things he will not allow you to get out of his mercy. There are people that have been trained, their mind is disciplined, they can manage having a fleet of cars, and they are still sane. They know the kingdom, they know what to do. There are believers that cannot cope with Mikra. One. When they go back to their church next time, they look at their pastor and say, that's my boy. No, you see, you don't know you. And that's why you have to trust the Holy Spirit to search your heart ahead of time. You don't know you. I love what Reverend Samadhi Amy said, that there are sins some believers are not committing, not because they are fine, but because they can't afford them. They can't afford them. I have seen people become bad news immediately after a major breakthrough. I've seen it. One of my spiritual daughters came to meet me in the hospital and said, so I'm traveling to the United Kingdom. I said, go and sit down. Go and sit down. It's not a good news. It's not a good news. You are just changing country. You are going to a territory where you will not know what day is Sunday, systemically. If Jesus is not crowned, that's, and you see, that's why from the beginning of your journey, it matters what you have created as a template to define success. If that template is money, any means to get it without Jesus is enthroned. Now, when I was going to leave, a, a batch was going to leave family house when I was serving, mistakenly they asked me to preach. I told them that with the way these people are going like this, and this kind of pursuit for money, most of these girls will end up becoming prostitutes. And most of them did. I was in Lekki. My God. Ah, those who took me there were regretting taking a pass. We went to eat somewhere. Praise God. I was seeing my father's mate come in with my younger sister's mate. And they were assuring me that those girls will still be in church the following day. I said, what is this? Now, let me say this to you. One of the fears I have is that the way we are emphasizing about prosperity, if we don't emphasize about training in the same light, will have many dysfunctional Christians, many dysfunctional organizations, and many dysfunctional homes. Now, I spoke with a woman in Abuja, wealthy. So money is not a problem. 
and she was crying. She said she won't, she won't say, if she doesn't find a way to leave this house, she will run mad. I said, what happened? The man, she said, in this house, there's no car you are looking for. You won't find. We have Royce Royce. We have this. We have that. He said, there's no money I need that I won't give me. Ah, is this not what people are looking for? So what then is the issue? You know the issue? The man has a system in place that makes sure she will never have one naira to herself. But anything she wants will come to a meter at the table. <laughs> you see, I think the least ceremony I attend in my life is weddings. Because it is not true that it is wise people that are getting married. I shared a story with you. A boy, a, a boy, 20, 20, 20, 13, 20, I can't remember what year. All right? He married a girl he shouldn't marry. Let me just leave it there. And they went to post online that those that say we can't marry, there's nothing God cannot do. This, 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 this. You have just entered where the devil is waiting. Now, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. You will not marry a rich fool. Amen. Uh, check. You know, you buy up and had it. They say, Omo go edo maku. Kilo mapa. Nabal died young. The rich fool too died. Okay. Now, there are four operations that apostles in the marketplace must have, must know and choose to operate like this. Number one, you must understand infiltration, how to infiltrate systems. You must understand how to infiltrate systems. And the aim of this is to particularly damage stability in your heart. So let me explain. To infiltrate a system means to learn how to get into that system. And it is important you understand that any system you have demonized, you cannot be a blessing to the system. You cannot infiltrate a system you have demonized. All right? You need to understand that the name of the Lord has to be got into every sector, every system, and be willing to walk with boldness, even if you have to walk alone. So you check. Majority of the things that the 21st century believers in Nigeria are battling with as we speak were a consequence of the things we once considered demonic. So how do we pave way for the next generation? It matters what we see as demonic. We need to get into every system. All right? We need to get into every system. Now, in a case, and I, I think I emphasized a bit on this on Tuesday, that in a place where a believer is singing because now we have gospel singers that will now have gospel entertainers and there's no structure. So a believer is singing and this fellow used to be born again and then, you, you know, now the problem now is not even the song. It is those boys that are holding the mic behind and the man of God is just singing or singing just as much as Azu. You are, you are wondering what's going on. Now, hold on. Let me show you a, a, a little about culture shift. Do you know that there was a time that in Africa, every hip-hop artist want to rap like Tupac and do many things. They call themselves homies and open their shirt and all those things. Because that was what we considered to be in vogue. But do you know what is happening now? Afrobeat. Now they are saying, come. You are wondering people who could not do collaboration with Afro pop singers are inviting those guys. That's not kingdom. But I'm showing you that when a people stay consistent with something, it becomes legitimate. What I'm rather showing you is that, do, do you know that this thing we call shaking and hugging that believers embrace them? Do you know it began in the Bible? Are you aware that there are tribes in Nigeria that culturally now, names like Matthew is now a cultural name? Because Christianity did not just come there, it invaded their culture. 
Why I gave you that example is this. If we stay in our own lane with creativity, they will be the one to copy us. That's the truth. And I, I, I think that for the church, the church should not be quick to be proud of people who are not representing Jesus. Yes. As a believer, you are acting in a movie and there's sex scene. You are not an ambassador of the kingdom. All the wrong things that can happen to people's mind when they watch worldly movies can happen to their mind when they watch your movies. I saw an American movie and the Cindy Selu is a pastor, is a pastor and all that. And I said, this is gay being endorsed here. Are you aware that there are organizations who start now, they, will, they are ready to pay you billions just to promote gay rights to the degree that your organization is strong. And they are ready to. But will you bow? Because if you are looking for a way to prove by all means that you have succeeded, you will bow. You will bow. That's why I said money is not a sign. God is happy with you. It is not. It is not. It is not. Let me, now, let me, let, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. I understand that this generation is a generation, is a questioning generation, powerful. Question realities, question status quo, powerful. Where is it really written out rightly in the Bible that the Christians should not have dreadlock? After all, Samuel had one. JV, uh, most Samson also had one. Okay. In Nazarite. Okay. No problem. Hear me. <laughs> In the days you were fasting and praying, God bless me, dreadlock was not interesting. To do all back as a man and even had attachment was not interesting. I just want you, Lord. First breakthrough, 10 million. You became Bob Mali. Are you seeing why it took time for your prayers to be answered? Now, listen to me. How do I explain this? We are romancing the devil. And my fear is the rate at which ministries are becoming tolerant. This adjustment culture is the killer of the next move of God. If something is not done, you will see Christians on pants and they will tell you that everybody knows God for themselves. You know, that's that language, nobody who has tried to know God for himself succeeded. They all backslided. So I had three days off just to relax, traveling up and down. And so my brother said, oh, wow, let's, let's, let's go and have a great time of conversation at the beach. I said, wow, to the beach we'll go. On your low and bear. Let's go there. A girl passed in front of us. I said, let's leave. The people we are copying. How do I explain this? Father help me. The people we are trying to copy, they have wealth but they have the highest rate of suicide and depression. See, the problem in America is not Boko Haram, yet they're having mass shooting. It shows you what money can do to a culture where Jesus is missing. Listen to me. This new Nigeria we are clamoring for, I have seen again, and I've seen that if we route it outside the church, we're in trouble. We can become more, see, 
Let me tell this to you. Something can happen in Nigeria that will make Nigerians miss Buhari. I do pray that may that day never come. But with this pursuit, and SARS gave us a glimpse. All of a sudden, we began to see that gays, lesbians, infiltrated the move. This new Nigeria, there are many people who have hold their own spoon and plates to cut their own portion of it. The land is green, but there are giants in the land. The greatest threat to where Nigeria is going to is not this current leader, it is those who are going there. You look at the anger. You look at the bitterness against the church. You look at everything. But I believe God is raising an army of believers whose voice will also be heard. Now, let me say this to you. We are not just spiritual people. We are smart. I pray that God open your eyes to see what I'm saying. Because the sons of Issachar understood times and seasons. And their brethren were at their command. We need a generation of men who understand times and seasons. This, I'm not sure God is interested in routing it the way we want to route it. It will destroy us faster than this one. Do you think Boko Haram can be a threat as much as iniquity can be a threat over a nation? Do you know the power of sin? I've lived in the north all my life before I came to the west. So we've been pressed on all sides like this. I've seen people carrying their intestine on their hands. I've watched somebody who was there together shot dead in my presence. But none of those things is as powerful as choking this light like money in the hands of a fool. Now, let me give you an instruction. Redefine success in your heart. Please redefine it. Redefine it now so that you don't route it through negative means. Redefine it. It's very, very important. So we need to infiltrate systems. God wants us there. We need believers there who can get into the system. Don't demonize it. Don't be scared of it. Go with greater light, greater level of excellence, greater understanding, greater level of preparation. We need preparation and intelligence even if they ate our Jesus, let them love our product. And as they love it, we show them our Jesus. So you look at the book of Daniel chapter number one. In that scripture, the way Daniel was able to infiltrate the system of Babylon was not even something he deliberately decided to. It was adversity that took them to Babylon. But that adversity was a setup. Are you following up? Sometimes somebody has been trying to get a job and there's been no job. Then finally you have to create something and that becomes a bomb. So it is not every time people get into systems deliberately. Sometimes people are pushed into it through adversity. Every time there's a problem, the problem reveals a new leader. Problem reveals the leaders. All right? Racial discrimination in America and black discrimination revealed Martin Luther King Jr. All right, apartheid in South Africa revealed Nancy Mandela. And you can check, copy, and paste people, leaders who have risen, Thomas Sankara, and all those people. Issues manifested them. Maitama Gandhi. You know, something happened during NSAS because I just like to see ahead and just understand something going on. There was a statue that was going around. And that's the picture of Aisha Yesufut, all right? And um, she, were, she was wearing hijab in that picture. And she was standing before police, defying, all right, their excessive use of um, force. 
And that picture was going around. And people were saying the same thing. That this is going to be the picture of, uh, um, no, of liberty for the new Nigeria. And I just listened to a different conspiracy theory. I know that most times, most nations don't know people until they are paid the ultimate sacrifice. That's not where I'm going to. But there are people that were saying that as a Muslim, if we are, they put that, that's going to Islamize the nation. Well, whoever is competent to get the problem solved, receive the crown. So if you don't want a Muslim there, you get there as a Christian. That's simple. Excellence is, excellence is not, does not belong to any religion. It doesn't. It doesn't. David was anointed as king in 1 Samuel 16, 12. But in that same 1 Samuel, now, when Samuel came to the house of Jesse to anoint a king, all right, I mean, it was clear, the oil was poured on him. God said, arise, this is him, and anoint him. But the oil itself will not take him to the throne. He needs to know more things. The same way we had the story of those virgins, it's Matthew 25, all right? Virginity was powerful, but they needed extra oil. Because you can also be having that virginity and still be a fool, according to scriptures. True or not true? <laughs> you don't become a witch. Every time you ought to submit yourself, produce, do something better, all right, think straight. Do what is wise. Honor God. You keep telling your husband, but you know you married me as a virgin. You know you married me as a virgin. What kind? What kind? What kind? Foolish one or a wise one? Now you don't like what I'm talking about, ladies. And wait, hold on a minute. Why is it that whenever we talk about the issue of virginity, only women feel sick? Men, it's like the way it's like the way God gave, created you, he gave you free door. Yeah, yeah, bye. Feed doors, you don't, so nobody can know whether you are or not. Your destiny knows. <laughs> mm. Praise God. So it is not enough to be a Christian. What kind of Christian are you? It is not enough to say what I've called success is that I've been able to make my company now have money in devotion. Fantastic. But can you also help them make more profit and get more resources done? We have to become productive. When we became fellowship leaders on campus, I made all my escorts sign. Sign the document. I will not represent Jesus on this campus with shame. The moment your result is not going well, resign. Very, very simple. Failure is an orphan. You will not fail. Yeah. Now, 1 Samuel 16 from verse 14. Scripture said, the spirit of God left Saul. An evil spirit. Now, don't take that word evil spirit from God. There's no evil spirit from God. 1 Samuel 2 also Anna said that, no, first Samuel 1, she said it was God that held her womb. It wasn't God. So that's the belief then, that anything that happens, God brings it. So an evil spirit began to torment him, taking the occasion of the absence of the spirit of God. Now, they needed a young man. If you look at the, let's, let's look at it. First Samuel chapter number 16. Let's start the reading. I was, for the sake of time, all right, I'm going to have to jump. We'll start the reading from probably verse 18. First Samuel 16. Is somebody getting blessed? So, but the Spirit of God departed from Saul, and evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And as Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God did trouble thee. Let our Lord now command thy servant, which are before thee, to seek a man who is a cunning player. The word cunning there is the word skillful player on an harp. And it shall come to pass that when evil spirit from God is upon thee, he shall play with his hand. Somebody say, he shall play with his hand. And thou shalt be well. And Saul said to his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well. Not an amateur. Play well. 
play well. Oh Lord, help me. Somebody say someone that can play well. Say it, somebody that can play well. So if there's going to be a keyboardist, you must be able to play well. Don't play nonsense, junk keys together, give us a bunch of keys and say glory of God for us. It doesn't. Play well. If I lay hands on you and say go and succeed, number one, God is not about to rob somebody else to make you succeed. The proof that you believe in that impartation is that you go and also upgrade on your craft. Because, hold on. If that that thing you are doing that you want somebody to give you more money, if they if somebody should do it for you, will you be happy? Will you say you are blessed? So why should God be wicked towards somebody else? Because you say you have favor. Your favor that you have received will not make somebody else lack it. You should also be a sort of favor to them. And king will come to the brightness of your rising. That's the way it works. Are you following what I'm saying now? Now, you have a medical student on campus. All right? Um, these are so so and so procedures. You are having your house job. You learn this. You learn every time you are supposed to learn those procedures. You are putting earpiece in your ears. You are saying, mana, mana, kala, bada, bada, bada. Is it good to pray? Fantastic. But you are going to get somebody killed this way. So if you say, I found favor in that hospital, at whose expense? The pregnant woman you will kill? Or the man you will forget Jesus in the stomach? God is not robbing Peter to pay Paul. He wants you to become a source of blessing. That's what he's doing. So most times, many believers don't know how to get into systems. You need to get in excellently. Follow the door. Follow the door. Yes, listen now. Esther was going to walk before the king. True or not true? But she did not put her eyebrow on her cheek. If there was an eyebrow, it was where it should be. You know, you know there are barbers that barb you, and before you know it, the clipper is already on your eyebrow, like that. I don't know if you have experienced that before. You just hold your hands and say, "Kill it, kill it, So the fellow that was going to weave her hair, everyone did their own part. There was a kind of oil they were supposed to use that would bring their natural color. So the idea is to give everybody fear hearing. It doesn't matter what life has done to you. Now you have a chance to come back to the way God wanted you to be. You see? And Esther was not walking before the king and doing... And that's why I don't just pray for people about future partner. How do you look first? Let's, let's start from the natural. Now, 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 now. You don't like what I'm saying. How do you, how do, how do you carry yourself? After service, you have run out. Your Instagram padlock, Facebook is bed that is there. WhatsApp, Joshua Selman. Yeah. God will just answer you like that because you are the savior of the world. You don't know that there can be prophecy that you are the next baby and the man will still say no to you. Ah, look at you. You don't know, you see, you see, you don't know what I'm talking about. This man. What I'm trying to tell you is that favor does not mean we should forget our own part. It doesn't mean so. We have a part to play. We have to work like there's no favor. We have to trust on God's favor like we are not working. We have to work. Favor is not an excuse for work. You have to be diligent. Recently, I found out that my life was rerouting. And I knew that the face I'm entering into, all the books I've read before, thank God for them. I need something higher. 
So I began to knock a particular door of somebody I saw doing what God is sending me to go and do. And the only question I have for him is tell me the books you are reading, period. We have work to do. How many books do you have on yourself? Say, okay, I have 200 books. An average Christian doesn't. Only few who have taken life serious. Okay. That book, you have Good Morning Holy Spirit, you have Tongues Beyond Your Power, Bible Batteries, Hellfire and the Reality of It, Angels and Demons. Now, those are fantastic books. How many books do you have on leadership? Nothing. How many books do you have that borders with your field? Nothing. How many books do you have on finance? Nothing. How many books do you have on certain subject, marriage and relationship? Nothing. The Holy Ghost is not an excuse for adequate preparation. See, see, there are things that has been better through people with the hand of God upon their lives. Don't go and ask the Holy Ghost for something he has already released. If it is on men, go to them that sell. Simple. Very simple. So we need to infiltrate systems excellently. We need to have answers that will make every head turn. We need to maximize, we need to learn how to maximize 20 seconds of opportunity to speak. So you need to know how to speak to anyone, anywhere. You need to know how to sell your market in 30 seconds. You need to know how to keep powerful people waiting to listen to you longer than they wanted to stay. You need to know how to be persuasive. Are you following what I'm saying here? You need to understand it. And I love what Dr. Stephen Akitano said. He said, whenever people come to him and they are asking for money and they are crying, he tells them, stop crying because you can't exchange money with emotions. Very, very important reality. Because we have overstretched on certain subject matters, many believers don't know the part that concerns them. You have a part to play. If I want to do something now, I'm trying to look for the best thing I can find. Two or not two. Who is the best? Who can get this done? Who can solve this problem? Who can help me with this? Who can help me? Who is the best thing on ground? Hey. Said, I choose to become the best. But don't forget that the end of these things is that we ultimately point men to who? To God. Ultimately, that's the end. That's what we are trying to do. But if we start with that, they will not listen. They will not. I was at the airport yesterday evening at Enungum and I was just tired. I couldn't check in. All right? They were postponing the flight. A lot of things were happening. And somebody walking there just ran to meet me and said, I was wearing nose mask. He said, are you Pastor Femi Lazarus? I said, yes. I said, wow, your messages have blessed me. I've been longing to meet you. Well, thank you. You are not the first person to say that. But what makes you different is that you are working now in an organization where I have a need. So he said, please, this is where we attend to those with complaints. And he gave me a cushion there. Please sit on this seat while I go to do this. We went to get water. We went to envelope some money. I said, this is nice. And the only reason that can happen is because he's working there. He has the key. We need to know how to get inside. We need to know. I, I, I was coming from Abuja. Was it last month or two months ago? All right? Coming from Abuja. And I got to the airport 55 minutes before the flight. And they said, you can't check in anymore. I said, why? 
we try to beg this, this, you can't check in, sir. This is fraud now. We paid for this thing. And then after a while, when it was too late, the same person who said you can't check in now ran back. I said, sorry, 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 sorry. Are you pastor so and so and so? I said, yes. Say, my God, I didn't know. I would have done it. I looked at him and said, what is this? So if I have to be pastor so and so and so for me to connect to your bowels of mercy, you are not an agent of Christ here. I should go on a retreat. If you say I have blessed you, I should go on a retreat. If you are as terrible as those in the world are, you are not there for Jesus. That's the truth. <laughs> so getting into different systems and establishment requires high level of skills first. Then with the favor and the anointing of God upon your life, you dominate the system. So you need skillfulness. You need to train your hand to be skillful. You need to beat your own previous record. The only person you are to compete against is your yesterday. Who you were yesterday. If you compete with anybody, you will limit yourself within you. You have to speak up. All right? Is there anyone here who have an answer to this? If you have it, speak. Silence is not wisdom in the corridors of power. It is not. Silence is not wisdom in the corridors of power. If God has given you the answer, speak. It is one thing to be gentle. It is another thing to be foolish. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, one of my mentees was working with a tech organization in Ibadan at some point, And then the vice president came to, that, came to see many startups. And then they were having some programs and all that. Now, I, I, I watched the video. He was trying to introduce what they were doing. Somebody else who did not make it, who did not produce it, but somebody who had more authority than him in that organization. You sub the whole opportunity and push them aside. That's the way the corridors of power is. People understand there is power in, vis in visibility. So once you have the solution, speak. Once you have the answer, manifest it. Don't keep quiet. And see, a survey... Um, a, a research was conducted um, and I, I can't tell the sample size and they tried to interview people at the last phase of their lives, most of them on their dying bed, to check what their regret in life was and they found out that most of those they interviewed had regret more about the things they did not do as against the things they did so don't live a life where fear will hold you bound and at the end of your life you will have regrets knowing many things you could have become if only you manifested. Now manifestation can be a lonely road. You must be willing to walk alone. You must be willing to walk alone. And I, I tell people and these principles, those who are with me in ministry knows that see, anybody who is too afraid of losing people is not going to be exceptional. There are people that if you don't lose them, you can't get to your promised land. There has to be a separation. You have to be willing to walk alone. But before you are willing, be sure you are in the center of God's will. Don't be willing to walk alone in error. Be sure. And then if it is correct, you can't be the only one that knows it is correct. That's the balance. There has to be a voice of confirmation, which is a voice of wisdom. Are you following what I'm saying here? But you have to be willing to manifest. Nebuchadnezzar would have wasted all of them in Babylon. Because he had a dream. And he was not willing to tell the dream. So he believed that the proof that you know the dream. <laughs> is that you should first be able to tell what you did not see. Then interpret it. And look at what the wise men said, the astrologers. They said, no king has ever demanded for something like this. Nobody can know this. Only the gods can know this. And the dwelling of the gods is not amongst men. Powerful. That's a powerful position for what only God can do to manifest. 
So when Daniel came and said, why are you in a hurry to kill everybody? Can you give me some days to pray? What did Daniel do? He went back and called his friend, Mishael, Azariah, and he says, we have to pray. So there are things that you will not get done on Google. You'll get done on your knees, and yet they are professional things. You don't know what I'm talking about. Consultant will take you, tell you that there are patients that God just has to inspire your heart to know exactly what to do. Sometimes you have to use unconventional means. There are means you use, you can't even discuss doing what around. It just happened. Like, um, what's his name? Um, Aaron said that we threw in the gold, then came forth the calf. <laughs> hey. You see, many of us have overlearned humility. Now it is humiliation. You will see conquering you as a way to prove he's a man. Are you following what I'm saying? And you see, things are even changing. <laughs> Now, the average girl you want to marry has a job, has a money. Some of them have their cars, they are doing their stuff. What's the other way to be a man? Uh -huh. So you have to manifest. Let me read again. Once you, once you have infiltrated the systems, you can't, you can't be too gentle with the solutions trapped within you. You have to let it out. You can't afford to lose your chances of entry into what God wants to do through you in that system. So there's going to be openings. There's going to be opportunities. There's going to be days of question. There's going to be days where only those carrying the unction can speak. When you recognize those openings, speak. When you recognize those moments, seize your moment. Seize your opportunities. These doors don't open all the time. You must understand timing. And sometimes you are the last. But lift your hands and say, may I contribute, please? And speak that wisdom. I pray you will not lose your chances. Amen. Manifestation in this regard has to do with manifesting superior wisdom. What you are saying must not be watery. If you are saying it at the level of everybody, then you get the same reward. <laughs> so you've got to have something better. Something sharper. And that's why you have to combine this, your intelligence, with plenty prayer. You pray like you are not smart. Manifestation in this regard has to do with manifesting superior wisdom, greater intelligence. Greater intelligence and solution beyond natural human capabilities. When everybody says this is a crossroad, that's where the wisdom of God starts. Why answer all the bogus names? I'm the apostolos of Jesus in the field of comedy. If you are giving dry jokes, we struggle to laugh when you speak. Your colleagues will prepare scripts and ask questions. But you just go there and say, you'll be inspired. And what you are saying is not true. Now, am I being inspired as I'm teaching? Yes. But I have a structured note for everything. Very structured. Highly structured. I take my time to write them out. I may not look at it while I'm teaching, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Take your time. You labor. You burn the candles. You're quoting scriptures haphazardly. The book of Fatai. Just believe that because somebody laid hands on you one day like that, it just manifests. Money what? Money queen. <laughs> Praise God. So if you look at the book of Genesis, chapter number 39, from verse 4 to 6. Genesis 39, from verse 4 to 6. Joseph came into Potiphar's house as a slave. He was a commodity. He was bought. It was a commodity. The same way they would buy a cow and oxen. They bought him. And when he came, the scripture says, Potiphar saw that the hand of God was upon him. What was the proof? Such that everything he did, he prospered in them. 
where the rest will. And let me say this, please. Let me let me just tell you this. Let me let me be frank with you. Let me be very frank with you. If you work in an organization where you are limited with what limits everyone, you can't be favored. In every setting, there are, there's just going to be those exceptional few individuals that when all the rest have hit the rock, they will still think something out. Everybody likes people who can think and still bring something. Put your right hand on your head and say, the finger of God is upon my life. I see what God sees. I refuse to think small in the name of Jesus. Now, hold on. Let me, let me shut it down here. All right? Now, let me say this to you that as I shut it down. Most times, the corridor of power is not a pleasant place. Babylon is not a place of love. It's a place of war. Let me, hold on. Let me give you a very practical example. APC primaries. Our beloved pastor, Professor Yendo Simbalo, came out. Then our daddy, Pastor Tunde Bakari, came out. Now, well, whatever your indices may be, I, I followed it keenly. And I said, this man is bold. He's up against lions. Tinumbu was saying his manifesto. He said, I've never lost any election. Now, where, where you are up against... Now, hold on a minute. That man, call him any name. You can't call him daft. He is to be studied. He knows this politics. Omar, that's the truth. Now... <laughs> When you get to such place, now, I'm not saying this to water down anybody. I'm just showing you. First, you saw how you Christians even saw him. You were indifferent. Let him go and try. They are all part of the old system. So you can get to the corridor of power and even your own people don't believe in you. Now, when Nelson Mandela, before he was finally freed from prison, his prison was changed three times. And at each level, the first level was with his friend, the last two phases was in isolation. The final phase was with his family. And at each level, he was losing friends because he was choosing not to go the route of violence. And finally, he lost his own. He had to separate from Winnie Mandela. She was angry. She wanted a fight. I only married my husband for about four years. You took us away from each other. Now you return us old. People must die. So he had to do many things in isolation. When you get up there, many times you will have to be alone with your thoughts. And everybody reads meaning to what a powerful man does. So how well do you know what you know? I know you know what you know, but how well? Is it enough for you to do it alone if you have to? us to pray in a minute. Now, many of you already have been placed by God in sectors where God wants your voice to be heard, but you just won't speak. So I want you to ask God, first I receive the spirit of boldness. You have not given us the spirit of fear, no. I receive the spirit of boldness.
I receive the spirit of boldness. I receive the spirit of boldness. I'm not a slave. I receive the spirit of boldness. Amen. Now, hold on a minute. There is nothing they are doing with ideas in heaven. There's nothing angels are doing with inspiration. There's nothing they are using money for in heaven. God knows, and even the devil knows, that if you have more than what you have now, his kingdom is in trouble. What then is the hindrance? You have a heart. You've learned how to trust on God to carry you. You have a heart for people. I want to help. I want to do this. So what then is the hindrance, every hindrance between me and where God is taking me to. Get out of the way now. Get out. Speak it loud and clear. Get out. Get out. Why this hindrance at this phase? Why now? Get out! And rebuke the devil. Out of the way, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Is there anyone here that really has a heart for God? You are tired of the narratives you see, you trust God for change in the systems.